two years after I joined here, I found out that I had the prostate cancer. And I was just, I was just mentioned it out there that I, they found out. And one of those, oh, that he'll be right, Les. He said, I had exactly the same. And we talked about symptoms and what, how, how they treated it. When they were cleaning out, they throw me outside because of the breathing. Because I've got asbestosis. And they keep throwing me out. Jimmy, get out, get out, get out. That's what you call care. And it, uh, they're good at that, mate. After the 1925s, uh, coming down here was a big relief. I was involved in those fires the day that um, a couple of the villages down south went bad. My husband has been going for I think five or six years now and Appen Men's Shed was basically his saviour. Wallandilly Community Men's Shed, which we call Wellcoms, uh, was started, I think it was over 12 years ago, and it was started in a collaboration between council and interested men that were looking to get sheds off the ground. How, how this all came about, how our shed came about was we were at the Anzac Day, and that was about 2007, I think it was. We had the Anzac Day down at Picton, and a couple of the guys said, you know, oh gee, it'd be nice if we had a men's shed out here. And uh, and uh, a small small group of, uh, of guys uh, came together with the church, and uh, um, the church had a an old building which I'm standing in now, which was the old Yandere Uniting Church and they offered it to us as a, as a, a building to, to form a men's shed. Although we started off with a shed, then it was all the verandas and water tanks and what have you because we, we work in conjunction with the community garden so they needed a lot of things done. They didn't have the manpower to do it. So the men's shed came on board and we were able to buy, provide the manpower. Anybody can join the shed. That's, that's it's, you don't have to have skills to join the shed. The shed is open to anybody. It's entirely up to uh, you what you want to do when you come to the shed. We are very strict on safety. Um, if somebody wants to come and learn how to use the machinery, you would be. Uh, buddied up with somebody that can use that piece of equipment and you would be shown you would be shown the skills of using that equipment so, uh, the guys that come here not only come to the men's shed to use the equipment but they come here for the social side of it and, and we emphasize that that that's what the, the men's shed is all about it's all about social it's all about men's health uh, a lot of guys have lost their partners um, so they look for somewhere to come and, and socialise with other with other men. Uh, so that's where we play we play a part. What we have here is a variety of uh, nesting boxes. This is for micro bats, which are very very small. Micro bats are no not much bigger than your thumbnail. They go in in here, and they actually stay in there overnight. So we do carry a variety of boxes in stock at any one time. Uh, Tums have their own site uh, and we put these up on the site uh, and tell people that they're for sale. Uh, and we sell them at our market, at a monthly market, on our own stall. The, uh, the, the men's shed uh, has a stall. One of the things we do here in the shed is we make up many boomerangs. These go to various craft groups where they're given to children 
and they paint them up as boomerangs. There's 300 boomerangs in the box there, waiting to go out. Right, this is what we call a, a, a Kenyan hive. Um, it's a little bit different to the standard hive that most bee, beekeepers use. But uh, we're making these up for, for a lady who is a, an apiist and uh, she asked us would we make them and uh, she had a few drawings and we've just gone ahead and we've designed this as to the drawings that she supplied us with. The mental health is, is one of the biggest issues that, that is a problem to men today. I think men's sheds play a very, very vital role in providing um, somewhere for, for men to, to come socialise and give them some, some sense of purpose. Well, what I found when I, when I joined up here, it was just, it was just good to become, to have a lot more friends. You come up here, you talk to the blokes, do a little bit of work, you know, and it just makes it more fulfilling in your life as you get older. As well as providing for the needs of the um, uh, older chaps of the community, um, that um, we do a lot of recycling. Uh, we make um, items out of mostly wood and sometimes metal that would otherwise be thrown away. So we've got a stack of donated timber. Um, we can um, use it to fix items of uh, furniture, um, uh, even doors over here and that sort of thing. We can um, cut it all down and I've, I've made some um, tables and chairs for little grandkids and that sort of thing which we then sell off. We also from time to time have people just turn up with a, an item and say look can can you fix it? Uh, one fellow came down and he had a, um, uh, a bit of a broken uh, handle in one of a shovel in one hand and the rest of the shovel. Uh, he'd bought a new handle for it but he didn't know how to put it in. About a quarter of an hour later one of our um, blokes here Rudy he'd um, uh, taken the old bit out, put the new bit in, and um, the bloke was really pleased and that sort of thing. Oh, oh how much is it going to cost? And we said, oh, just a donation, thanks. Oh, even um, last week, um, a lady uh, uh, put on Facebook. She was trying to find how to contact us, and um, she actually uh, uh, wanted something made out of some MDF, and we were able to use the, the good tools we have here to cut them out from stencils and that sort of thing for us. But we do do some Islamic burial chambers. They're like, they're like really big wooden boxes. They don't have a bottom in them. Well, a, a sort of like an informal contract, but we've got with Catholic Cemeteries Trust. They supply all the timber. They supply all, they supply all the material, not just the timber. And then we, we cut it all up to size and put them all together. And we do do 10 every, sometimes it was once a month, sometimes every two months. And uh, that's really, really helped our fi financial uh, aspect in the shed, you know, giving us a, that's, that good income coming in all the time, you know. The way that the Wallandilly men's sheds have moved now is more towards community work. They've given that safe space for people to, you know, catch up, connect and, and just like I said, build that support network and have those people to lean on who are going through similar things. I think it's really important what they're doing and and the work they're doing now, not just as a men's shed, but within the community. About two years after I joined here, I found out that I had the prostate cancer. And I was just, I was just mentioning it out there that I, they found out, and one of them said, ah, you'll be right, Les. He said, I had exactly the same. And we talked about symptoms and what, how, how they treated it. So I found that, that support and been able to talk about problems here, which you do about all sorts of problems. You know, I just found that's just so good, it's so good. And I would recommend it to anyone.
Happen Menshed's a community-based, not-for-profit organisation. It originally started in the old tennis club um, next door to here. Um, they were there for quite some time, then they extended the tennis club, and then ultimately managed to raise enough funds to actually have this um, shed put up some three years ago. Uh, since then, uh, it's been an extremely uh, successful venue. We're essentially here priority for the mental health of the members. Anything we do associated with that in the workshops, etc., is just uh, to keep the mind going, keep the skills up. But I always reckon that the, uh, the table down the end where we all sit and talk is the, the business section of the shed where uh, all the work's done and the schemes are thought up and people uh, just sit and listen and talk. And the uh, workshop area is the entertainment section where people bumble through what they do, <laughs> lose things and <laughs> go crook. But um, basically we have a great time. Yes, we've got a few people that uh, have tried new things. Uh, one of the chaps here had just taken on uh, lead lighting. He wanted to have a go at that. He hadn't tried that before. Uh, essentially, we um, raise funds through um, Bunnings barbecues, through uh, little projects that we take on that don't require deadlines. We do also hold uh, stalls where we sell gear up here at the uh, local markets. Um, products we make in here in the way of breadboards, etc. And we're currently making a range of toys. The South 32 uh, Memorial to the mine disaster. We try and maintain the area. We do quite a bit of planting and mowing and a uh, bit of gardening, if you're that way inclined. Uh, we made all these suits for the uh, structure. There's several members of this shed that will swear black and blue that the shed saved their life. That they were spiralling down on prescription medication or uh, just uh, lonely. Uh, partners have died off or just at a loose end after work and not knowing what to get into. Uh, we've also had three or four success cases where people have come back from long-term workers' comp and trying to get back into the workforce and uh, sort of learnt to socialise again and get into a few projects and it wasn't long after that they'd have a job. And the uh, wives of the uh, men that come here have started their own group, a friendship group, which meet on a on a shed day, the main Wednesday, um, up in the historical society up the road where they can sit and talk and, uh, and basically have the same camaraderie. So I'm Jan. Um, my husband and I lived uh, on the far north coast and my husband had a stroke. So we moved down close to our son in Appen. Um, my husband was very isolated because of his stroke, he couldn't hear. As a result, he became a bit of a recluse. Um, he's never been one to talk much about himself either, so it became very difficult for us. So when we moved down here, he heard about the men's shed and decided to go. Well, Ross has always been a gardener. Uh, in the shed, he can't hear, uh, so he tends to be outside a lot anyway. And it's been, it's been really good for him. He's made some really um, good friendships with some of the men and it's an interest that he loves with his garden. He's very proud of the garden he's creating around the shed. Um, and from a mental health point of view, which is really what Men's Shed's all about, um, but also from a very physical point of view, they're very active. Yeah, I think it's a great thing. I really do. Yeah, and from a wife's point of view, I've met some lovely other wives. And so from my point of view, being new to a town, it's been great for us as well. Otherwise, older people that move to a new town, if there's no outlet for them, it's very difficult. Um, I'm Linda, my husband's Mick, and he's probably one of the younger ones at the men's shed. And he just likes to um, teach people, 
mentor people and if anyone um, anyone needs to know wants to know learn how to do something so he's happy to show them how to do a, um, work on the um, the wood lathes, metal lathes, he used to have wood lathes and metal lathes himself so he knows how to use them, um, CNC machines and he used to just go on a Wednesday morning, now he goes on the Friday, now mm. he goes on a Saturday if he's got something going and he likes to project manage as well. So. I'm Karen and my husband has been going for I think five or six years now after he was um, forcefully retired. He did not cope with it at all and Appen Men's Shed was basically his saviour. The Men's Shed opened up so many um, possibilities for him and they've been working on different projects uh, around the place, you know, um, outside of the Men's Shed. So it's been a win-win for him for sure. I think with the projects that they do, they do a, quite a few community projects of doing up um, windows and doors of, of historical buildings and things like that. It's just a great interest. Yes, yeah, so those men have worked all their lives and they've been industrious all their lives and you know it's really hard to just stop. Yes, yeah, yeah. And, yes. Um, and then when they stop work, yep. they're a nothing. Mm -hmm. And it's good in that way that then it, it they become something again because yeah, they can come into the shed. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Self-esteem is amazing. The shed yeah. And um, and they can be part of a group again, part of a, a team where they yeah, were. they're worthy. Yeah, yeah they're that's not right. just thrown on yeah. the dump. Well, more yeah, than that, yeah, they're actually right. helping others because they're mm, all absolutely. teaching each other skills. Yeah. Which is yeah. Really yes. Yes. Nice. yes. Yeah. One in four Australian adults identify as being lonely or isolated. Um, we know that the Wollandilly population, about 9% of that is on the outer fringes of, um, of our Wollandilly Shire and, and those, those people are, are highly isolated. We know that the effects that that can have on people, um, it's increased risk of depression, um, diabetes, poor self-care, self-harm and even suicide rates. Uh, the, the beauty of the men's sheds are that it, it gathers these people together. They can connect with other local men with similar interests um, who possibly are lonely and isolated too. And it creates that connection, that social network. This shed was established back in 2012 uh, by our local Rotary Club with support from the council and from um, the workers club where we're located here. I think there's about 12 or 13 members here. Older men tend to go into uh, recluse and this is just a way of, of helping them keep into, I suppose, a bit of a social atmosphere. It fills a gap and gets them out uh, which was what the original uh, plan was when we, we took it on as a Rotary project as well. They can have a talk with people their own age and are in probably the same position as what they are. We've got a new subdivision down the road here and uh, we hopefully plan to um, maybe attract a few of the more senior members out of that group. But for the time being, the ones that are here enjoying the, the environment and each other's company tell plenty of yarns and um, it, it's doing the job that was designed for. I'm a long term resident of Oakdale, I've lived here all my life, went to the local school, my kids all grew up, went to the local school and uh, I've been involved in the men's shed because I think it's a good thing to have in the community, um, keeps men involved particularly when they're retired and uh, they're not at home and knowing their wife all day. It's a, a meeting place, a place where you, you can get out, meet with people with similar interests, uh, gives you an opportunity to um, dis discuss um, various aspects of life, whether they be health, medical or uh, social. Uh, I, fi I found it to be a really good meeting point.
I came in and we had the AGM, I suggested about raising money through making um, different objects uh, to sell. And the membership sort of uh, voted me down there and said that they were just happy to come and have a cup of coffee and, and what have you. Most of the chaps that are here are happy just to come along. Um, they'll sit down, they'll have a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, discuss the current affairs, work out how they can solve the world's problems, but it doesn't always happen, but it's, it's a good opportunity, a good place to come to, and men are always welcome. <laughs> you know, they're a big help, you'll know, see. We've been here since uh, 2018. We kicked off with a, uh, a bit of a meeting and an idea, and this is where we are. We now have a membership of 18 people. We've been here for the four years, and a lot of that time has just been taken trying to sort things out. We've uh, been able to get a few grants from various uh, government departments and councils and one thing or another uh, and has allowed us to purchase some machines and, uh, and make a workable shed out of it. We've been donated a lot of stuff. It's a process of going through it all and, uh, and it all takes time, you know. Basically I came down here to have a little play and do something different. Um, my career as it was, was uh, metal work and electrical work. And down here I play more with woodwork than I do anything else, which is really cool. Uh, totally different, of course. Um, not so much in the planning, but in how you treat the materials. And it's good fun. You know, guys are all down here. When you sit around and talk, there is a, a, a tremendous background of Australiana in different things guys have done through their lives. Plus when, you, when you're doing a job, like even building something like a, a, a bench seat, the different ideas and experiences come in and, and you build something that's viable. Like the one behind me, a fair way back, but the one behind us, um, we're actually giving that to a retirement village. And it's taken a few months to build, but it's a really nice piece of product. Our skills are improving in that sense as we work along. Uh, yeah, it's good fun. We've been building some planter boxes uh, and we've got a project coming up that we're going to build some bird boxes and uh, animal boxes. Some come down to the shed to do a bit of work and others just come down for a cuppa and a chat, which is what, <coughs> which what the idea of the shed's all about. All the guys tend to take the mickey out of each other, which brings humour to it. No one takes it seriously. It's, it's good, enjoyable fun for guys to get together and have a giggle. After the 1925s, uh, coming down here was a big relief. I was involved in those fires the day that um, a couple of the villages down south went bad. Uh, and they, they knock you around a little bit, but coming up here was a great relief. We were able to relax, you have a chat about it, and the more you chat about it, the less it impacts you. Um, it's, it's good in that sense, that you can actually come up here and have a chat. No one, um, no one judges you. Um, and I think it's more just the fact that you talk about what, you, what happened and where you were and what went wrong uh, and the feelings you had during that time. Um, it, it just opens it up for you and you can get over it. It was ugly. <laughs>
But yeah, the mental health side of it up here is brilliant. But yeah, I think it helps everybody. In 2019, in February, we had a meeting at the Bargo Sports Club to gauge the interest of a men's shed in Bargo. At that original meeting, 50 people turned up. So as obviously there was interest and a need, so we went from there. We're in a small town. Um, there's not much available for men in Bargo. You've got a pub and you've got a club, not always ideal. I approached the owner of this building. It had been abandoned for about five years, about leasing it, and uh, we had currently have a lease on this building. Because the building was built in the early 1900s, there was no plans of the building at all, so we had the building replanned. There's been an access plan, so wheelchairs will be able to get to every room in the building. Um, disabled people will have facilities basically want to make it a place that is available to all men in Bargo. So what we're going to do is put 110 mil of concrete over the existing slab which will remove all the trip hazards and also put a ramp up that will get us into the front room of the building. We're putting in two new toilets and a new kitchenette that'll all be with railing and everything, um, wheelchair access, uh, we've got Nathaniel Smith here today, our local state member. Uh, Nathaniel helped us out a lot getting us a Premier's grant. Uh, without Nathaniel's support, this floor wouldn't be here and the men's shed wouldn't be moving along how it is. And I'd just like to thank you, Nathaniel. No problem. Yeah, after a few months of delays, like everybody's had with the weather, we've uh, finally got our concrete in. As you can see, the place is looking good. We've got our ramp in for a disabled access into the front of the building. We've put in a door between the front showroom and the middle workshop. So once the walls are painted, we can start laying out equipment for the future, um, making sure it's all installed correctly and uh, putting safety um, procedures in place. One of the things that I think we've done at Bargo very well is live up to our motto, building mateship and support. We've got a welfare officer in place, we've got social interaction, we provide transport if people have got somebody in hospital. It is a social network of support and friendship. It's gone from mainship to friendship with a lot of these guys. It's really good. It's a good project that's really paying dividends in the local community. We've been running our coffee club up at Bargo Sports Club on a Friday. One day, Jimmy hooked up to me and says, where are you going? I said, going up to the club to have a coffee. He said, I, I don't drink coffee. He said, come up and have a coffee with me. So, and then it just grew from there and there and there. there there's usually probably maybe 14, 16 here every week. It's just a, a thing that we get together. All of us become very close. We get up here and have a chat and uh, talk about different things, not the shed, but sometimes and, and you open up, which I just did. I was talking to uh, Gary and talking about something personal and, uh, and it's, he hears it with open ears and no, no judgment or anything. Can I swear? We just put shit on each other. Uh, and I think we're all professional at doing that, one way or another. <laughs> uh, and that's all in good fun. None of us take it too seriously and we just enjoy each other's company. I think it's really important. We've been having barbecues. We had Christmas in July. We've had the blokes morning teas. Bargo Men's Shed, uh, Dave and the fellas over there, they helped us build this garden, or the community garden here at, at Bonnie Cottage. They built a new greenhouse for us. Uh, they came, spent a day or two here and rebuilt all the garden beds and secured them so they will last. 
We're about supporting the local community. In the past, we've worked at the community garden, the Greyhound Rescue, Bargo School, about moral fire recovery. And we see this as a base to get out and do some community work as well. We want this shed to be part of Bargo and the local community, just not closed in four walls. It's going to be in the community. So what we know is that Wallandilly is sitting in a significant growth area. We know that over the next 10 or 20 years, we're going to double in size. That's a population growth of up to or over 100,000 people. Um, and we know that that will also increase uh, the amount of older people that we have living in our shire, which is why it's so important that we continue to support our current men's sheds and we look at opportunities for other men's sheds if they so wish to get off the ground. I see what all the sheds are doing and, and the impacts they're having on our community, not just in the sheds but externally too. They're, they're doing more stuff for the community, community projects, um, they're getting awareness out there about men's health, uh, men's mental health. We come, all come from different walks, different uh, ways of living. Men's sheds are the greatest thing, it's the best thing that's ever happened to this area. A large um, significant reason for this is mental health and I think it makes a difference. I really seriously think it helps people manage their own situation, whatever that is. And we're all different. We all have different needs, and we, but this is one little place that we can get together and we all meet the same criteria. We just have a good time. I uh, joined the Bargo Men's Shed um, thinking it'd be a good idea and it's been Slowly it's grown to the fact that I look forward to going there Tuesdays and the second Saturday of the month. Uh, I look forward to it. A good bunch of blokes. Uh, we talk about openly about anything. Any, you only got to say you need to do something or need a hand and they're there for you. Which to me that's good mates and uh, nothing's too hard for them. I appreciate being a member. Being, I'm also the oldest, uh, so yeah, it's, a, it's all a good thing. Well, being a part of the Bargo Man Shed, there should be more people join, I think, because it is a good thing. It's a good encouragement for a lot of people, and I think more people should get involved. Maybe because they don't realise uh, what really goes on. And of course, because I can't breathe, I go there on a Tuesday and it, uh, when they were cleaning out, they throw me outside because uh, they're breathing. Because I've got asbestosis and they keep throwing me out. Jimmy, get out, get out, get out. That's what you call care. And it, uh, they're good at that, mate. Not everybody goes along there to work it, uh, because some of them can't. But uh, they go there and have a good chat, and have a cup of tea, have a good chat and spend a few hours. And it's a good thing. Anyway, I think. I love that they all have a different personality. Yeah, for sure. So, and they're all uh, really skilled at different things. Um, we know Tamil makes bat boxes. Um, and uh, supports, um, you know, wildlife. We've got Bargo, who does some great community projects. Um, yeah, and big socially. Big social outings. Yeah. Uh, we've got our smaller sheds like Menangle and um, the Oakdale, which have a real focus on um, just really connecting and having a cuppa. We've got a, a mammoth shed out in Appen that have all of these different spaces and all of these different age groups. We've got Warradale Men's Shed, quite an isolated community. They were so crafty during the COVID pandemic. They were making um, Islamic burial boxes and they've really na made a name for themselves in being able to provide support to their local men during a ridiculous time yeah. of need in the pandemic. Um, but also earning some income for their men's sheds. 
Um, I just love that their personality shines through in each shed. Yeah. 